One Circuit Mailbag, coming to you live from downtown Tasmania. One Circuit, foolishly squandering pay packets is our speciality. Super light. Super light. Big package containing not an awful lot. Big package containing PT 1221C. I have no idea what that is. I think temperature, maybe. I'll look that one up. So not a trans, uh, sorry, <laughs> not a temperature uh, component, but a little transistor, a little photo transistor. Look at that, with a uh, a cute little mm, semicircle lens on the side, and then underneath you can see the uh, connections and the direction from uh, I presume collector to emitter. I'm really keen to solder one of these guys up and see what comes out of it. Let's do that. A little photo transistor here, and I've just put a little 10k resistor there just in case maybe this thing works in sort of like a voltage divider fashion. Um, we may or may not use that, I'm not sure. This one here is just um, an LED and a little current limiting resistor. So if we get some juice on here, uh, what have we got? Five volts. So we could have five volts coming in. Yep, so that's actually working. Nice to check that before we start. Um, yeah, so you can see the direction I've got for the LED. I've just put a little dot here to indicate ground and I've done the same on this side for the um, emitter. So um, let's get some wires in here and see if we can't get this thing to, uh, to respond to light. All right, so all I've done is just put a little lead here going from the other side of this divider to ground. And um, let's just plug this in. Not seeing anything on that LED. I'll give it a little bit of light. Ah, look at that. <laughs> That's very interesting, isn't it? That's so good. All right, um, what else could we do? Well, uh, we could try it with a laser. So let's see if we can put some laser light on it, see if that makes a bit of a difference. So it's got a little five volt laser here. And uh, we'll just shine that on there. Yeah, look at that, that's nice. That's pretty clean signal. Um, the other thing I guess we could do is we could run it past uh, a not gate. So in other words, when the light's shining on it, uh, this is off and when the when it's dark, then the light comes on. So let's do that. We have our NPN transistor here, SS8050, and it's a SOT89. And it's just configured at the moment as a NOT gate. So theoretically, this circuit is live, and so the light on here means that we've got a high coming out of the photo transistor. And then that should be converted to a low which means that the LED is not on. So as soon as we cut the light, there we go. Quite sensitive too. As soon as we cut the light, then there's a low signal coming out of the photo transistor, which means there's a high signal coming out of the NOT gate and the LED comes on. So yeah, nice component and um, nice little circuit as well. I uh, think I'll be using this one again. Hmm. Feels like a lot of packing in there. And there is. And we've got a oh, little voltage slash current meters. Uh, of which I've got some, but um, yeah, I wanted another one. So uh, you might recall that I used one of these relatively recently 
for a project which included um, like a power supply to an LED unit. In fact, that's what's supplying the light to the bench at the moment. And there's a little voltmeter ammeter on it. I'm reading 20.4 volts and 1.6 amps, even as we speak. And these guys are just replacement for those ones. So they're very handy to have. Here's what I just baked. Smells delicious. And inside is rattly stuff. Which I think is dip switches. Yes, it is dip switches. <laughs> I was looking at dip switches recently and realized I didn't have an awful lot of different types. And now I do. So, whoop, careful, wrong way around. Here we go. So what have we got? Smallest is one dip switch, which is this guy here. And then we've got two and three and so on, all the way up to, how many have we got there? Eight, looks like eight's the maximum. Yeah, nice. For those times when you need dip switches. Bit fiddly, but could be very useful in some contexts. Medium rare. And inside, some packaging. And inside, ooh, what is this? I have no idea. Battery chargers, I think, for nickel metal hydride batteries. Uh, and the guy doing the hard work is a CN3085. Hmm. And it looks like it comes in different versions. And it looks like I've gone for the three cell version. So three nickel metal hydride cells, power comes in, and I'm guessing it just provides a nice little trickle into those nickel metal hydrides so that they can be charged three at a time. There's three nickel metal hydrides. This one is fully charged. These two have been discharged. So I'm assuming that there's not much point in, uh, in doing this unless this guy can balance as well as charge. So let's give it five volts and see what happens. And we get, oh, just turn the power off. That doesn't help, but <laughs> well, let's try again. There we go. And we have a charging light. So that's a good sign. And uh, I might just let that go for a while. Five volts. Hmm. Is that enough? I guess it is. Uh, 1.2 times through is 3.6, so we're over by a bit. And then it's just a matter of, uh, of this guy doing his job for the next little bit. Um, one thing which is interesting is that there's a quite a, um, a heat sink on the back of these things. So I haven't got a heat sink on there, but I have suspended it in the sky and I'll keep an eye on the temperature and uh, we'll just see how it goes, balancing and charging these guys. So the charging light has gone out and uh, that took maybe an hour or so. So pretty quick for the three cells. And just a reminder, one of the cells was fully charged and the other two were quite seriously discharged. So um, what I'm looking for is not just whether these are charged, but also whether they've been balanced. So let's have a look and see. And we've got 1.32 and we've got a runaway, come back. And we've got 1.32, ooh, looking promising. And the last one, 1.31, pretty impressive. So I like this little unit. So I might uh, mock something up whereby we can get five volts in there. Actually, I'm thinking maybe even solar um, might do it. But uh, yeah, very keen to get um, a better solution to what I've got at the moment to charge the nickel metal hydrides. Nice one. Singed to perfection. And inside, oh, many, many transistors. Hmm, looks like maybe two different types of transistors. 
maybe a PNP and an NPN. Let's get a little closer and let's get the tester fired up. So the C8550 and the C8050. Right, all right, so let's see which is which. Put them into the tester. The tester says PNP, which makes this guy, I assume, its cousin, NPN. Yep, nice, little TO92 transistors. Match pretty well. Right. Let's see what we've got here. And inside is ah, little modules that do what? Don't know. Hmm. It's a crystal on board. Uh, yeah, let's get a little closer and have a look. Oh, I'm not sure. Well, it's a curious little thing. Um, you can see by the one centimeter markings uh, on a cutting board here uh, how small it is. Uh, the actual chip itself is unmarked. The only thing that I can see that it could give a clue is it says ant, um, which I'm guessing is the antenna. So I think there's a matched uh, communication boards, if you like. So we should be able to, if they're transceivers, we should be able to hook up one to one Arduino or Nano or whatever, and one to another, and they should be able to talk to each other. Over what range? I guess, I guess it depends on ant. Wow, interesting little tiny guys. 6.7458. Hmm. Um, interesting. That is the mailbag for the week, and uh, we'll catch you next time. See ya.